Good morning. Welcome to the second lecture of this week of ongoing course on understanding and reducing greenhouse gas emissions where we are looking at scope 1 and 2 emission reduction through building design and construction. Today we are going to look at calculation of emission reduction from design of fenestration. We are only looking at window design. Now within this window design there are a lot of aspects of design that can be considered for example window wall ratio. So how much window area should be provided or we can also look at the orientation where the windows should be provided. Now all of these details this will impact the energy consumption of the building. How can we calculate if there is a reduction in energy consumption of this building? We can use whole building simulation tools. So what we do when we are going ahead for green building certification is that we create a simulation model, a hypothetical model with the given input information of the building and calculate the energy that is going to be required to run the building. And then we will have the solutions, the strategies, the choices of materials of design and we will try to reduce the energy which is going to be consumed by the building. Now that is detailed process, it is a comprehensive process, it requires a lot of data, it requires a lot of uh, resources, manpower and time to calculate exactly how much of energy savings can, can be achieved. But that is an accurate method. However, when we are doing some of these calculations as initial testing of the idea, we might not be having the time, enough time to go for whole building simulation, which is a separate uh, complete exercise in itself. We are not going to cover that as part of this course. However, if we have to make the initial choices and we have to know initially approximate numbers about how much savings can be can be achieved as far as carbon emissions are concerned through differences in the choice of material or choice of design. This is what will matter, these are the parameters that are going to matter. So what will matter? The first is the U value. So what is a U value? It is the overall transmittance of heat from one side to the other side and it will vary with different materials. So, for example, if we have, so in fenestration we have overall U value of the window which is dependent upon glass, whatever glass is going to be used and the frame that will give us the overall U value of the window system. Now if you look at ordinary single glass which is the single clear glass or any other glass, reflective glass but not low E not low emissivity glass, it will have a U value of 5.88 approximately 6. This is watts per meter square degree Kelvin, the unit for U value. So the ordinary glass will have approximately 6 as U value while if we look at a double glazing with a low E coating on one of the glasses and filled the cavity between the two glasses filled with argon or any other heavier air argon or xenon, it will have a U value of approximately 1.8. So we have reduced the U value from 1.6, so from 6.0 to 1.8. That is almost one quarter of the value that we were getting here as the highest one. So this is one of the properties, the U value determines how much heat is going to be transferred from through this material. So the moment we say that we have reduced the U value, it implies that less amount of heat is going to be transferred through this material which has a lower U value. When we say less amount of heat is going to be transferred, I am not talking about the direction from hotter side to the colder side. Now that hotter side in warm climates could be outdoors. In extremely cold climates, cold climates, it could be the indoors which are warmer. So the direction of heat exchange will change, but the amount of heat that is going to be transmitted through this material, this uh, window material is going to be less than this ordinary single glazing. That is what we have to understand. This is one property. The other property that we have is SHGC, solar heat gain coefficient. What is this property? I think we have discussed it earlier but I am repeating it here. 
is suppose 100 percent of solar radiation is incident on this glass, how much what percentage of this is going to be directly transmitted inside is the solar heat gain coefficient. So, if it is 1 and inside it is only 50 percent going to be transmitted then the solar heat gain coefficient is 0 0.5. This is why is it important because glass is a transparent material and unlike wall or roof which are opaque there is also going to be some component which is directly going to be radiated. There is direct radiation that is passing through the material it is not blocking the radiation 100 percent. So, SHGC becomes very very important. Now, how is it going to affect the energy calculation? So, what will happen when we are doing the energy calculation? Assume that there is a building for uh, example, I am sitting in Roorkee right now this is a composite climate for India. So, we have extreme summers very hot summers and we also have very cold winters. Now, I have a building which is having windows on all the four sides. So, it is a uniformly distributed window wall ratio on all the four sides. So, this is what I have as a building four windows on all the uh, four sides. Now, the sun assuming that north is up the sun is going to move like this for most part of the year from east to west through south. So, what will happen that I will have a lot of heat direct radiation which is going to come from these three directions at different times of the day. When the sun is in south and west the temperature outdoor the outdoor temperature is going to be at its peak plus there is go also going to be radiation. When the sun is in the east the temperature the outside temperature is going to be low and there will be solar heat gain there will be direct radiation. The radiation is equally intense it is the temperature which is changing the outdoor air temperature. So, the two components is what we are talking about. Now, I have to select a glass there is a glass of 6 u value and there is a glass of say 1.5 u value. I select and I replace all my windows initially I was having a u value of 6 for all my windows and then I decided that I am going to replace all my windows with double glazed low E windows which are having a U value of 1.5. If you remember the formula this is U value we are talking about. So, the heat gain is equal to U into A into delta T. U is the U value, A is the area and delta T is the difference of temperature between outside to inside the two surfaces the two sides of this material. Now, what all remains constant here what do we have? We have the area which remains the same we have delta T the temperature which remains the same in case we have the set point as the same assuming the same set point what are we changing? We are changing the U value. So, what happens if I reduce my U value by one fourth? So, originally I had 6 and then I take 1.5 which is one fourth directly my heat exchange is going to reduce by the same proportion. The U value is 6 Q and rest remains say constant A into delta T. So, 6 times T this is Q 1 and Q 2 is equal to C into 1.5. So, Q 2 is equal to Q 1 by 4 one fourth of the original value. Now, this is the heat exchange what happens to this heat? We have to extract this heat using say HVAC system. So, the moment I say that I have lesser work to do this is in watts this is what we are calculating in watts and for say per hour if we are calculating. So, I have this as watt hour or kilowatt hour whatever that uh, unit we are using. So, this is the direct amount of energy that is going to be reduced when I air condition my space. So, the moment I say how much carbon would be saved it is the same amount of carbon that would be saved. So, 3 by 4 of Q 1 is what I am getting as 
savings, the electricity savings. And just as we had the conversion, the uh, coefficients of conversion for calculating carbon emissions, we can directly calculate how much of the carbon emissions are going to saved if we are talking about changing the u values of this glass. Now, this was about u value, but we have to remember here we are talking about scope 1 and scope 2. The moment we say that I am going to use a double glazed window, which means that instead of one sheet of glass, I am going to use two sheets of glass, which means the embodied energy has directly doubled. So, if I look at the overall, if I look at scope 3 emissions also, which is not the scope here for us in this course, but if we are considering scope 3 also, then double glazed will have an impact, will have higher scope 3. While if the aim is only to reduce scope 2, then the double glazed with a low E will work better than a single glaze. If we are looking in totality scope 1, 2 and 3, then we will have to make a choice. As far as scope 2 is concerned, it is clear. The next is SHGC, the other property is SHGC. Now, what uh, how we influence SHGC is? We have to reduce the heat from transferring, the radiation from transferring through this transparent material. So, what we can do? We can add a film, we can give a tint to the glass, so that the amount of heat, the overall radiation, not heat, it is heat plus light, the overall radiation that is directly transmitted through the glass is reduced. So, we have a lot of films which can cut that down. But the moment we say it is cutting down the radiation, it is cutting both heat as well as light that we have to keep in mind. But imagine a scenario where there is no direct radiation coming onto the window and how can it be? Suppose I have a window on a wall, this is the window we are assuming. Now, there is direct solar radiation which is going to be falling onto this. What if I have a chaja, I have an overhang which cuts the solar radiation significantly. There is no solar radiation that is incident. The SHGC remains the same, but the amount of heat that is transmitted inside is significantly reduced. So, SHGC becomes a material or we could have multiplication factors which is how the ECBC works, energy conservation building code and the calculation for the heat that is that is transmitted inside due to SHGC is calculated. Again, we will calculate the amount of heat that is reduced, but in clear understanding we have to know how and where these shading devices should be provided of course, along with the selection of material. So, this was about calculating emission reduction through fenestration, we have to clearly know the U value and SHGC values for the material that is going to be selected along with other design parameters like window wall ratio and the distribution. I will stop here today, see you in the next lecture tomorrow. Thank you, bye bye.